Hi, and welcome to Animal Zone. I'm Arthur von Wiesenberger, and this handsome fellow is Mikey, my adopted pit bull. Animal Zone is the A to Z on everything about adoptable pets. Whether you're looking for a bird, a cat, a dog, or even a tortoise, we've got experts who can share their knowledge and insights. So cuddle up with your favorite critter and join us as we explore the Animal Zone. Mikey, smile, <laughs> because there's no selfies today. You're going to be modeling for a pet photographer, Wendy Domansky, who will share some tips on how to get the best possible pictures of you, oh, and a little treat too. Then the pet psychic, Laura Stinchfield, talks to a former Disneyland horse that's retired to Willow Creek Ranch in Santa Paula. We'll also meet a happy pup that's been adopted from the Santa Barbara Humane Society. So focus as we find our way into the animal zone. Bonjour Alex. Bonjour Renaud. Happiness? It's great food prepared the French way. Chocolate eclair. What makes you happy? A touch of Paris. Without the trip to France. Handcrafted daily in our bakeries especially for you. Indulge yourself. Bon appétit. Please visit Renaud's in Gelson, Santa Barbara, Long Beach, and La Cañada Flint Ridge. The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we provide low-cost spay and neuter services and vaccinations. It's important for your dogs and cats to get vaccinated to prevent illnesses, and spay and neuter surgeries help prevent unwanted pregnancies and can benefit the health of your pet. At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not chop. Today we're with Wendy Demansky of Wink Face Photography. And Wendy, so great to have you on Animal Zone. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. I'm and you so didn't even excited. bring a camera. I do. Well, I've got one. We're going to be pulling it out in a little bit. So. That's what we're going to be showing people today is how they can take pictures of their pets, how a professional does it. And Wendy, you've been doing photography of animal shelter pets for quite some time. Yeah, about three years or so. Um, I've been doing uh, pet photography. When That must be a challenge when you're dealing with shelter pets because they're in cages right. and that doesn't look so enticing does right. it? Right and that's definitely why I wanted to get into um, pet photography is to be able to help out um, help get animals in, in shelters adopted because you see some of the pictures that um, some of the shelters post and by no fault of their own people are busy um, they don't have a lot of time to spend a lot of time on photography but sometimes you see the animals they're in the cages it kind of looks like they're they're in a prison or in a jail so really I think the goal is to, to get a flattering picture of the dog or cat uh, you know, to help showcase them in a better light so that people can picture, you know, having this animal and, right. you know, the happy animal that they can bring home and bring wanna, into their life. Yeah, well, if it looks good, then you might might be good, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, now, I mean, for those of us who have pets, of course, we want to, we take photographs ad nauseum. I have my iPhone filled with photos <laughs> of my dog, Mikey, yes. and also the cats. Um, but the occasional really good shot is tricky. 
It uh, is. And I think that's where technique comes into it. How, how do you, what are some of those tricks that you've used that work to get a great shot of a pet? Yeah, and every animal is different. So when you get to spend some time with the animal, you learn what their motivation is. Some animals absolutely will do anything for a treat. I have a dog named Wink. She is so food motivated that she will sit there for hours and stare at you if you have a piece of food. Uh -huh. Others, um, you know, to get them to look at the camera, they're de definitely motivated by noises, squeaker sounds. Um, you know, that's definitely something that will get get an animal to look. Uh, the owner, if they are very attached to an owner, if the owner's standing right over my head, uh -huh. you know, that helps in getting the animal to look. So there, there's a lot of tricks that you What happens if you get a really seat. shy animal that's like scared of camera gear? Right. We, we actually have had that hit happen even when we're shooting the show. Sometimes a cat might be uh, spooked by all the lights and, and, sure. and strange people. And I, I've been told that sometimes a camera lens looks like a giant eye to them. It does. And that does. can be intimidating. <laughs> what about cats? Cats are, are, are very difficult to work with because they, right. they, they, you can't kind of organize them. Dogs tend to pay a little more attention, but cats sure. have their own agenda. Cats, uh, cats are difficult. I'm definitely more of a dog person, but I have definitely I've photographed cats in my career as well. Um, cats, you just have to be a little bit more slow with as well. You uh, feather toys and, and things like that, treats, shaking the, the treat box. A lot of times will work for cats, and just letting them. You know, cats are very independent, so letting them come to you when they come to you and they're ready. That's when you start doing the photos. So. It's, it's, cats are tricky. <laughs> yeah, well, um, well, Mikey, uh, uh, who we're going to photograph in just a minute, he's very cooperative because he's getting used to being on camera. Well, he's quite the celebrity, uh, I Yeah, he's, he's signing his photographs everywhere he goes. <laughs> um, and for the most part, he's really good. I, I often think that sometimes, you know, you, you want to make your pet look the best possible, and that means giving him a good bath before sure. being photographed and, you know, cleaning all his little bits and pieces around his paws so everything looks sparkling white or yep. whatever color it should be. Uh, do you ever do any kind of makeup at all on, on pets? I don't do makeup on pets, but what I spend, oh, I've, I've spent more time than I, I care to admit on dogs cleaning up eye boogers. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's always little things and fuzzy things, so, you know, thankfully there's Photoshop to kind of take care of the little uh, flyaway whiskers or, you know, the, the little things that might be caught in the corner of the eyes or somewhere, you know, throughout. So it's. So there's after. There's photography a lot of there's post work. processing that's, yeah. that's done. And then when you do it for your uh, clients, mm -hmm. uh, do you do it as big blow up photos? I mean, yeah, I mean, as large, you know, a wall piece, you know, people want to commemorate their pets and have large pieces of artwork on their walls. And so, yeah, it's blown up. So at that point, too, you want to make sure that the pet looks absolutely perfect because when you see it, you know, in a 16 by 20 or larger, 30 by 30, you know, what have you, um, you know, you want to make sure that everything looks, looks perfect right. for the client. Well, let's, uh, let's take a break. And when we come back, We'll get Mikey and we'll see how perfect we can make it. Oh, I'm so excited to meet him. We'll be right back after these words. Hi, I'm Steve Kragenbrink with Woods Humane Society and you're watching Animal Zone. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry, if someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Every morning, you could count on it being there with the rise of the sun. We're proud to say we've been there every day with you. The Santa Barbara News Press plans to continue sharing the news of the day with you all through the year and beyond. It's nice to know there are some things you can still count on. The Santa Barbara News Press, serving Santa Barbara since 1855. Subscribe today. Call 1-800-654-3292. The Santa Barbara County Animal Care Foundation is dedicated to saving animals' lives, but we need your help to continue this critical work. SBCACF provides year-round medical and surgical care so that abandoned, homeless, or abused animals receive the best second chance at finding a loving home. No animal is turned away from surgical care. To learn more and assist us in keeping that pledge, visit sbcanimalcare.org and make a donation today. If they can be saved, we want to save them! And we're back here on Animal Zone with Wendy from Wink Face Photography. And here's Mikey, our pit bull star, and he's ready for his close-up. 
So Wendy, how do you start um, getting to know him, so to speak? Yeah, so um, a lot of times I just like to spend some time with the dog just to kind of get to know their temperament. And because um, I really want this to be a fun experience. If you kind of come up and, you know, make it too stressful, then the dogs can sense that. So we just kind of, you know, I like to come up to them, play with them a little bit. You know, if they're a high energy dog, the owner can just kind of let them run around a little bit just to kind of let some of the energy out. And then we get ready for the photos. Well, I know if I let him go loose on this, he's going to go right to that bag of tricks. <laughs> There's <laughs> lots of goodies in that bag. He's I'm not very concentrated lie. on that right now. Yes, they usually have to have a lot of treats and toys and noise noisemakers and there's lots of dog smells on that bag probably right now too so he's pretty smart yeah all right so um, I guess the first thing if you're if you're going to be doing this yourself you have to kind of uh, figure out what kind of background we have a pretty pretty nice clean background yeah. no, and that's... outdoor lighting which seems to be pretty uh, cooperative today right we've got some nice cloud coverage and so We've got a huge softbox in the sky right now, so nice, nice light. You probably don't want a lot of distractions when you're photographing a dog or a cat, and that means right. not a lot of people, a lot of, lot of animals running around, right? Correct, correct. Yeah, nice, um, nice even background, uh, limited distractions, uh, you know, nothing that won't look attractive in a photograph. Make sure that there's no trees coming out of the dog's head. Make sure there's no garbage cans or anything that won't look attractive in the photo, especially for the shelter dogs. You really want to show them in a nice, soft, pretty environment. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're, you know, uh, especially when you're dealing with a, a breed that might have a negative stigma. You know, a lot of times I like to showcase them with a lot of pretty flowers or just something, you know, real nice, soft, neutral, uh, right. soft, pretty background. All right. All right. Well. I think he's pretty relaxed. It looks like he's ready to go. Yeah. So the way that I photograph dogs, and if anyone's ever seen, um, you know, uh, my photos or any uh, professional pet photographer's photos, a lot of times you're going to see the dog off leash, and that's not necessarily the case. Um, uh, really ever in my photos. Uh, the dog, I, the safety is number one concern of mine to make sure that the dog's safe and on leash. But what we do is we do a lot of Photoshop trickery. So the owner is always standing close by or somebody's holding the dog out, holding the leash, and then we use Photoshop to remove it. So one more element that you're, you're removing. So now Photoshop you see it, now you won't, don't, right? Right. It's like magic. And so I always hear people say to me, um, you know, I can never have my dog's photo taken. He would never stay still or he or she would never stand still. Well, that's not the case because, you know, we can keep him on a leash, keep him still, keep him safe and just remove the Photoshop in, in post-production. Right. Are we ready for this, Mikey? I think, I think we're ready. Are we ready? Okay. Uh, so he's ready for the toys that are in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to work for it first, though, before you get some of the treats. Lovely. I think we got some really cute pictures. Cool. That's fun. And, and uh, you're fast, too. <laughs> What do, you, what do you usually think a session should last time-wise? It, it just depends. I mean, it's usually about an hour, hour and a half. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have uh, two or more dogs in, in the, you know, the photo session. So that makes it a little bit more challenging. I remember I was at a, a park in Chicago and um, I saw, I was there with a, a client and her two border collies. And I see this family photographer come in with a, a family and two kids. They were in and out in a half hour. And I was still two hours later, rolling on the ground, probably in goose poop and <laughs> things. And I'm watching them come in. Everyone smiles, they leave, and I'm still running around trying to do all that. So it just depends. It just depends on the person, on the dogs, you know, how much fun we're having. Well, it seems like a, a, some really great tips, and I can't wait to see the pictures you've taken. Yeah. Uh, and most of all, I think Mikey enjoyed himself, right? Did you and have a good time? That's the whole point. We want to make sure that the, the dog's having fun because if they're not having fun, they, you will see it in the photos. You will see it in the photos. And so we want this to be a pleasant experience. We want it to have that, that fun smile. So when we showcase it as wall art, you know, we can yeah. have fun memories of, of the whole experience. Mikey? Come here, come here, let's let's and patience. Let's really, have a seat. The, the key is just let's having sit. patience. Let's sit. I always tell my clients that sit. Good sit. you know, most wait. times wait. Now things what? are not gonna go well. You, no, no, sit, <laughs> sit and wait. Are you gonna shake hands with Wendy and say thank you? Okay, here comes Wendy. Shake hands with Wendy. 
Shake, shake, shake. shake. There you, you so go. Much, what a good boy. Thank you for being such a good model. <laughs> He's so good. And thank you for being such a good model. And thank you, Wendy, for showing us all oh, these great absolutely. tips. We really appreciate it. Yeah, Remember, it's Wing Face Photography if you want to check out Wendy's uh, talents. And uh, we appreciate uh, you coming on Animal Zone today. Appreciate you having me. So thank you to you and, and to Mikey. And great. can't wait to share the photos with you. We'll take a break and we'll be right back here on Animal Zone. Take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today and don't worry if someone beats you to the shelter there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Care for Paws was started in 2009 with the goal to reduce pet overpopulation and keep animals out of shelters and also to ensure that pets can stay with their owners for life. We from the get-go established a free spay and neuter program that would help low-income pet owners fix their pets. So we provide shots, microchips, dewormer, flea treatment. We also have a veterinary intervention program. It's a way for us to help improve the quality of life for the animal as well for the owner because when an animal suffers in the family, so does the rest of the family. Imagine, if you will, a zone. A zone where animals can talk to humans. Submitted for your amazement, the pet psychic, as we enter the animal zone. Today we're at Willow Creek Ranch in Santa Paula with Laura Stinchfield, the pet psychic. And we got Valerie, who's an educator, and her beautiful horse, Tyson. Tyson is absolutely stunning. It's like he's ready for being in the movies. Well, he used to work at our famous theme park down in Anaheim, and he was pretty handy there. He pulled carriages, he pulled the trolley car down Main Street, he pulled Cinderella's carriage, and uh, he liked to hand for the camera. He did. Now, it looks like maybe he was pulling your leg, too. Well, yeah, we had an accident two weeks ago. We were grazing at the top of the hill. Yeah. And something scared him. He's only been here for two weeks. Right. Something spooked him, and he kind of reared and spun toward me, and I jumped back out of the way. And when I hit the ground down the little hill, my leg snapped, and I, I've never heard of anyone breaking their legs standing up. So. I broke my leg standing up. So you didn't fall? I didn't fall until afterward. I was standing there going, no, no. And he was spooking, so he blasted past me. I thought I was out of the way. And just at the last minute, his big batoot hit my shoulder and launched me. So I tucked my head and got ready and you know, did the tuck and roll. But you guys are still friends. Oh, of course. Oh. I love my baby head. Well, maybe Laura can tap into what spooked him. I would love to know. You know. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? So, Tyson, what do you think about what happened with you and your mom the other week? What spooked you? Oh, he said he got something, he got scared of something that was rustling in the trees and he thought it was a big bird or a mountain lion. I smell mountain lions here. I smell mountain lions here. Ooh, they are scary. He, he says that this place makes him more nervous than his old place. Why does it make you more nervous? You don't know it as well? There's more wild land around? There isn't though. There was wild land there too. And there was a mountain lion there yeah. that came right into the ranch. But I knew that one. Oh. Yeah buddy, but you're like so big. You don't have to worry about a mountain lion. 
you don't know this area, there are so many hiding places. Yeah, there well, are a lot of hiding Well, it takes places. a little while to get to know a place, but you, do you feel like you're settling in now? When you hit your mom and, uh, so he's saying that when he hit his mom and she kind of like screamed, she, he said he knew he had done something wrong. He said he wanted to come back to you, but he got nervous. What did he yeah, do? Yeah, he did. He came, he came right back to me and stood there for a minute and Good. checked on me. And, and I reached up and patted his nose like, okay, you know, we did it now. And then he walked right behind me and started grazing some more. Oh. Now this is amazing. What a beautiful animal. And uh, I hope you heal fast. Well, thank you so much. I'm, I'm very, very fortunate, very blessed. Thanks for inviting us out here at uh, beautiful Willow Creek Ranch. Well, it's my pleasure and my honor. I'm so grateful to get to share him with anyone who wants to be with horses. Terrific. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we've got more Animal Zone coming right up. I'm Tiffany from Westside German Shepherd Rescue. We encourage you to adopt and don't shop. My grandfather taught me about the beauty of the rugs. Each one tells a story. Story about the person who wove it, the person who bought it, the person who inherits it, the person who treasures it. It's amazing how simply looking at an object can bring you back to a different place and time or remind you of someone you love. At Santa Barbara Design Center, we want to help you find the rug that will travel through time with your family for generations to come. Visit us at 410 Olive Street and find your treasure today. Water, the essence of life, flowing from Mother Earth, gathering essential minerals, trace elements and vitality as it journeys to the surface, collected fresh and pure from springs around the world, each one as unique as a fingerprint. The world's best bottled waters are waiting for you at bottledwaterweb.com. So today we're here with Kodak, and we're having a Kodak moment, and Darshana. And so thank you for coming in today and joining you're us. Welcome, you're welcome, you're uh welcome. -huh. Tell me a little bit about uh, Kodak. How'd you find Kodak? Actually, you know, I, I believe like uh, a friend of mine says that the dogs find you, you don't find the dogs. Uh -huh. So we, we lost our baby, our other dog, uh, over a year. And at that time I felt like, you know, I did not some time to heal, do some healing. And then I waited a year, and then after the year, I uh, decided, you know what, I'm gonna be open and receptive. So I came over here one day, and, um, and I couldn't see anybody. So I said, okay, that's okay. I didn't even tell my wife or my daughter. I went back home. The next day I came over, and I just talked to the girl and said, I just wanna walk around and feel how I feel about it. And I walked out to the back, and there he was with Erica inside one of the one of the place playing and she said uh, he's he's a, he's really he's really uh, a challenge but he's really loving and he's very close to my heart and that was it because after that it was all about um, being open to what would it take to be able to bring him home yeah so did you did you play with him for a while yeah yeah well actually at that point she said well you just go in the front and fill out the application do the paperwork and then you can, you can call and set up an appointment to come and play with him. So I did exactly that. I set the appointment. I came back like a couple of days after. And I got to play with him. And he was, this is not the same. He had a lot of energy and he just wanted to play and run and play and run. So, but I got to play with him. And I got to feel his energy and know that he just needed some some TLC, you know what I mean? Sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so you, you, you brought, hey, look, look at this. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> so you got to uh, take him home. And, well, yeah, and, we actually. Did you, was it like a trail run or did you? Well, we did a few things. First, I started coming in to take him for walks. Mm -hmm. So that way we can bond. Then uh, we agreed to bring him home. And we did that for like three or four weekends. So he'll come home and, and, and meet, because we have a kitty at home. We have a cat. Wow. Yeah. How'd that go? Yeah. Well, at first, it didn't go too well, you know, because <laughs> the kitty was, uh, after being a year without a brother, she was a little bit intimidated. He was very curious about it, obviously. So he needed to learn how to handle his sister, Lulu. So, um, so we have to go through the process of teaching him that it was not okay to go after her and uh, be able to 
her to have her own space, mm -hmm. which is with my daughter's room, and he being okay with it. He just needed some training, of, you know, on, on just about everything. That's, 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 the, that's the thing with, with Kodak, is that he's very smart, he's very loving, he's very loyal and passionate about doing what you want him to do. Uh, and as you can see, he's got a lot of energy. So when, 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 you, when you deal with that, you have to be patient, you know? Oh, baby. Yeah, you have to be patient. Right. That's all. Yeah. And so when you take him out for a lot of walks and exercise, playing... Daily. Then, yeah. Now is daily. You have to. Every day? A couple <laughs> Every times a day. day? Sometimes a couple times a day, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We go to the beach and he plays ball and he just goes crazy with the ball. And uh -huh. But what is that? Yeah. Yeah. He just... It's, I mean, he has changed so much. In, we had him for about four months, I think, three or four months. And he's just completely different. My daughter is crazy about him. He's a snuggler. He likes to snuggle with her. He likes to snuggle with my wife when I'm out working. He's just a very loving, precious baby. Isn't that great? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I still get people. You know, I get people that I could be going. I, I live right in downtown Santa Barbara. And so we walk to the beach from our house in Ortega. And I still get people who give us the little look and they pick up their dog like, oh my God, there's a pit bull coming. But, um, Isn't that strange? It's weird. It's like they don't know pit bulls. I know, it's like, I think like they're living in another, another reality. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but you know, we, we're okay, you know. Um, we understand. And we do want him to be able to be an ambassador because he's so good. He doesn't bark at dogs. He doesn't go after them. He doesn't do anything. The dogs go to him and he's, he kind of just go about doing his own thing because <laughs> he just want to go to the beach so he knows he's going to get to play. Mm -hmm. So he's just like, okay, I know where we're going. I know where we're going. And, uh, but you do, get, you, know, you do get people still. I go to uh, Burro Beach over here and where you can actually release them and he's playing with me and people are coming. And the moment they see him coming, they pick up their dogs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I remember one time I, I actually took a dog down there, my, my foot bill named Mikey, and uh, someone came over to me and he just looked at me and said, why? And I went, what do you mean, why? He says, why do you have a pit bull? I go, because of the most wonderful dog, and this is an adopted dog needed a home. Exactly. And, and it just, it's just yeah. so sad for me to realize that these wonderful animals don't get the respect and love that they really deserve. Yeah, and, and that's, what, that's part of why you know, I want to be able to do is I want to be able to give people an opportunity to experience him, you know? Like when we go out there and we're playing and everything, um, if people come in and say, can we pet him? I go, of course, I mean, he's a, he's a love bug. But I want people to experience because obviously they got the wrong information. They're not, they haven't experienced what it is to be around them because they're so loving and giving. Yeah. Well, we agree. Thank you, Kodak, for coming. You're the best. You're the best guy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Hey, we really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for watching. We're going to take a br quick break and we'll be back with more Animal Zone. Sometimes scary things happen, like fires and floods, and suddenly a family has lost everything. That's why the Unity Shop has a disaster assistance program. We help families with immediate needs like food, clothing, and household items, and we continue to help them long term until they're back on their feet and in their homes. But it takes a whole community to make this possible. Please, donate today so we can help everyone who needs us. Find out how you can help at unityshop.org. Hi, I'm Carrie Burns and I'm the Executive Director for the Santa Barbara Humane Society. And what we want you to know is that humane societies are local to each community. No one is associated with the National Humane Society. So when you donate or you adopt, know that everything that you touch is right there in your own backyard. We want you to donate, volunteer, and adopt. For more information, visit sbhumanesociety.org. some amazing animals and guests. You know, you who adopt animals from shelters, you are the true heroes. If you want to see more about Animal Zone and other things, check out our website, animalzone.org. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Never was a friend so true. Never was a friend like you. Canine, you're my best friend. Canine of mine for all time so glad you're my best friend through thick and thin we'll see things
rings through Canine of mine so true Did I find you or did you find me? Either way it's still serendipity When I saw you it was plain to see You weren't just another lassie wanna be oh canine of mine Friend for all time I'm so glad you're my best friend.